Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the best 3DS emulator on Android, Citra. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, there's a few different versions of Citra out there. By far the most popular one is the one listed right on the Google Play Store. This version of Citra has over 1 million installs. It's insanely popular. A lot of people like it, but a lot of people complain about performance issues. And that's because this version here focuses on quality as opposed to emulation speed and performance. The version I recommend isn't listed on the Google Play Store, but I think people will like it a heck of a lot more. The version of Citra I recommend is called Citra MMJ, where MMJ stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano. I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. Feel free to check it out. You'll probably have to check it out in order to get the APK file here. Once you're on the site, you can either do this on your phone, which is the easier method, or do it on your PC and then just transfer the file to your phone after. Uh, click on citrammj.apk. At the time of filming here, it's 15.6 megabytes. Now, once the APK is on your phone, feel free to open it up and install it. You might have to enable installing from unknown sources as this is not coming from the Google Play Store, but from my understanding, it should be 100% safe. Once you've enabled it, you can install it, and then once you've installed it, click open. The very first time you boot up Citra, it will ask you for access to your storage, and the answer is allow. It needs to be able to see your games. The next thing to do is to click add folder to library, and this is where you tell Citra where your games are located. Citra MMJ supports .cci, .cxl, .3ds, and .3dsx files. If you don't understand what those file types are, I do recommend checking Google because there's a lot of great information there. Now, once you find your 3DS games on your device, click the OK button and they should show up in the main menu. If you wanted to change the directory later on, just press the plus button here on the top right hand corner and you can freely change the directory. For the next step here, we're going to click the button next to the plus button. This is the settings button here. We're going to change some settings. From the settings menu, the first thing I recommend making sure is checked is use dual core. This will really help out performance in game. For everything else here, you don't really need to change anything if you don't want to. Screen layout, we have a few different options. It's completely up to you. I recommend just sticking with default until you see what you're dealing with. For internal resolution, you can crank it up to four times, but I don't recommend doing that. Just see how these games emulate on your device. If you're emulating things flawlessly, then maybe crank it up. And for accurate multiplication here, I do recommend keeping it off because enabling this will slow down your emulation. But if you're running into specific graphical issues, Try putting this at fast or accurate and seeing if that helps. Now scrolling down a little bit in the settings here and I still don't recommend changing anything. For shader type here, it's set to normal with cache and I recommend keeping it there. Uh, for post-processing effect, you can change this if you want, but I recommend keeping it off just to start. Scrolling down a little bit more in the menu here and we do have an option for new 3DS mode. If you're playing new Nintendo 3DS games, just check this option off. Anything else here you don't really need to change. We do have one option here for enable audio stretching. If you're encountering audio stuttering, just check this and it should help things, but the audio might be delayed a little bit. On the very bottom of the settings menu, we have two options that are set to off by default and you might wanna turn them on if you play certain games. For microphone type, we have static noise and real device. Completely up to you on what option you wanna choose. Uh, camera type, again, completely up to you on what option you want to choose. We have still image and use camera. In the top right hand corner of the settings menu, if you screwed anything up, if you changed something and performance isn't where you want it, just click reset setting and you should be okay. Now back on the main menu here for Citra and in the top right hand corner, we have a burger menu. Click it and we have a few different options. Input binding, combo key settings, install CIA and refresh library. If you have game specific updates in .cia format, just click install CIA and you should be good to go. If you have a Bluetooth controller and you wanted to configure your controls, click input binding here and you can set each button up individually. Now, once you're done with that menu, feel free to boot up your game here, but we're not quite done setting things up. So here is Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D up and running and you can see it's not running quite at full speed. 
The speed is sitting between 78 and 82. The FPS here is around 23 to 24. It is a little bit slow. To fix this, we can fix it from the main menu by just clicking and holding on the game before you boot it up, or you can just hit the back button here to bring up the pause menu. From Citra's pause menu here, we have a bunch of different things we can do, but if you really wanted to help out performance, click cheat code. This isn't your traditional cheat code menu. So there's a 60 FPS hack here. Make sure the game is selected and make sure the FPS hack is selected. This will vary from game to game. For example, in Zelda Link Between Worlds, I think there are two menu options here, uh, one for 30 frames a second and one for 60 frames a second. So you will have to play around with them to see what works for you. In this video, we've got Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D checked off and 60 FPS checked off. From here, I click save. So here's a quick before and after. On the left hand side here is before running at about 23 to 25 frames a second. And on the right hand side here, after the 60 FPS cheat was applied, we're running close to 30 frames a second. The game is playing a lot smoother and things look a heck of a lot better. Now back on the emulator pause menu and there are some more tweaks we can do. In the settings menu here, you can do things like turning off the input buttons if you're using a Bluetooth controller. You can show the right joystick if you're playing a game that requires it. You can turn off haptic feedback, which I like doing if you're using the touch controls. If you scroll down a little bit here, there are some more options you can check out. They might help emulation and they might not. FMV hack probably won't work that great if you have JIT enabled, which you should by default. Uh, skip slow draw is off by default here. Skip CPU access is off by default. You can try checking those out, but chances are it might not really do anything. Uh, use linear filter is off by default. Again, you can try it, but it's probably not going to do a whole lot. Uh, resolution you can crank here if you want. I wouldn't recommend doing that though. Uh, you can change your layout and you can also enable your accurate multiplier. Back on the emulator pause menu here and we do have a few more options. You can click edit buttons and change the position of the touchscreen buttons if you're using those. Uh, there is a multiplayer option. You can create and join a room for multiplayer games. And one of my favorite options here is custom layout. You can change the size and position of the top and bottom screen and configure it to your heart's content. You can change the aspect ratio. You can keep it the same. It's entirely up to you. At the end of the day here, I'm a big fan of Citra MMJ. I highly recommend it. It's 100% free and what they've been able to accomplish is very impressive. It continues to get better here too, so if it's not working just right on your phone, be patient because this is active and it's being updated. Anyways, that is all I've got for this one. Hopefully the video was helpful for you. Let me know your thoughts about Citra MMJ in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about Citra MMJ versus the official Google Play Store version of Citra in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care. Thank you.